Okay. Hello, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Um, as I said in my last video, uh, I was having a bit of a problem with the with the internet, uh, both with my Wi-Fi connection and with my VPN. But that seems to be more or less a thing of the past now, and uh, and that's good because um, well, my most recent book was very short. It was a novella almost verging on just a, a single short, short story, in fact. Uh, and it's called um, Neller's Happy Campers by Edgar Keret. Edgar Keret is, a, is an Israeli author. Um, and this particular book uh, was turned into, uh, or, well, book, maybe novella, short story, like I said. Uh, it was actually turned into a film that you may have seen called uh, Wrist Cutters, A Love Story. I haven't seen the film. But uh, after reading the book in the last two days, um, I, I also read the, the Wikipedia summary of the film. And it sounds like, with the exception of the names of some of the characters and presumably a mostly American cast as opposed to a mostly Israeli cast of characters as in the book, uh, it sounds like it sticks pretty close to the story of, of the book. So, you know, if you like, check that one out as well. So Risk Cutters, or not Risk Cutters, that's the name of the movie, sorry. But, and like I said, I haven't seen it, so I can't really speak to quality. Uh, although I have heard that it stars Tom Waits. And, well, the music nerd in me uh, loves that. So I definitely plan on checking it out only for Tom Waits. Uh, but anyway, uh, Neller's Happy, Happy Campers. This is a really odd story it's kind of a um it's a story about the afterlife but a very specific afterlife only for suicides uh basically in the story um uh suicides go to a specific afterlife that is only for them that takes the form not so much of heaven or hell as basically just the world but slightly worse and I guess you could say that that is kind of a hell. Um, you know, it it certainly would not make me happy to find uh, uh, to find that the afterlife is just like this world, except a little bit worse. Um, but it follows the the main character. Uh, his name is Morty, and uh, a few um, acquaintances of his. One is uh, his best friend in the afterlife, whose name is Uzi. And uh, another is a hitchhiker that they pick up on their road trip through sort of hell. Uh, and basically, uh, Morty learns that uh, his ex-girlfriend has shown up in this, well, they call it Deadville, or one of his, uh, 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 Uzi's father calls it Deadsville. Um, so his girlfriend has shown up in Deadsville and he learns about this and he sets out on this quest to find her. And along the way, uh, he he and his friend Uzi pick up this hitchhiker named Leehee uh, and she has kind of a romantic spark with, uh, with Morty. Um, but uh, eventually they, uh, they meet a very strange figure named Neller, who has set up almost, almost like a hippie commune slash summer camp kind of place in the middle of nowhere uh, on the outskirts or in the in the countryside. And in this camp, uh, small miracles happen on a regular basis. But there is a twist because although miracles happen all the time they go away if anyone makes a big deal about them. So if you care about them at all, the miracle will stop working. Uh, and this first happens in the story uh, when before they're meeting him, or before they meet him, uh, they're driving along in a car whose headlights have been uh, completely unfixable um, for presumably forever, basically. And uh, all of a sudden, the headlights come on, and they all make a big deal. Oh, it's a miracle! How did you do this to uh, to Leahy, who was driving at the time? And um, 
as soon as they make that big deal out of it, as soon as they're amazed, uh, they spot this guy, Neller, lying in the middle of the road, swerve to miss him and wrap the car around a tree. And he later explains that this happened, that this is the, the way it always happens, that uh, as soon as someone cares, the miracle goes away. Um, and it's kind of an interesting point because all of the campers, all of the people at this sort of hippie commune-esque place uh, can make miracles happen, you know, any, almost any time they want because they've grown accustomed to it. They've gotten used to it. Uh, but Morty, the main character, he can't, and he desperately wants to, to be able to. And because he wants to, he can't, because that's making a big deal of it, and therefore it doesn't work. So eventually, they find that uh, there is a, um, a kind of a cult leader uh, who goes by the name of the Messiah King, or goes by the title of the Messiah King, although his actual name is Joshua, and he uh, shortens it down to J very uh very blatant reference to jesus there uh who used to run a cult in the galilee in northern israel and after committing suicide as part of his sort of cult ritual promising that he would come back he finds himself in this weird suicidal afterlife and uh he has Neller's dog, which he is kind of kidnapped, and Neller's dog, by the way, can talk, but not very well. And uh, he also has, as one of his followers, um, Desiree, which is uh, Morty's ex-girlfriend. And so they attend this ceremony, and at the ceremony, um, Joshua, the Messiah King, Jesus, kind of, uh, says, Basically, I got it wrong the first time, but now I know what I'm going to do, or now I know what I'm doing. And he kills himself again. And after that, the crowd is just kind of displaced. And uh, it turns out that Neller was an angel. And uh, Leahy, who had claimed that uh, she did not really kill herself, but she accidentally OD'd uh, the first time trying heroin. Um, it finds out that it's actually true. There was a mistake. She should not have been in this weird suicidal afterlife because it was an accidental death. So she's allowed to go back, presumably. And Morty just kind of goes back to his old life um, or his old semi-life. And he has a really interesting, there's a really interesting idea here. Um, at one point, he connects romantically and sexually with Leahy, and um, he says that everyone in this place is living a half-life. And she says that um, even before she killed, or even before she died, everyone she knew was either dead or half dead anyway. So a half-life is good enough for her. And so when Morty goes back to his old life, uh, working at a pizza place in the city of the dead and, uh, you know, going out to bars and going home and watching TV, he kind of takes comfort in that idea that, um, you know, a half-life is good enough. And it ends on almost a hopeful note because, uh, you know, Leahy gets to go back and try again because there was a mistake. She was an accidental death and not a suicide, and therefore uh, she should not have been there. Um, and Morty kind of, even if he doesn't move on, even if he doesn't find what he was looking for, because he, he went searching for his ex-girlfriend Desiree, and although he found her, uh, he didn't get her. Like, he doesn't get the girl in the end, either one. Uh, but he still, he still kind of comes to accept his lot in life, uh, and he he comes to accept his place in the universe, uh, in this sort of limbo uh, place. And I think it's a really interesting story. Um, it's kind of cyclical in 
the same way that I imagine uh, a lot of conceptions of limbo or purgatory would be. And that's, you know, that's kind of where I imagine he actually is. Um, obviously, in a lot of, uh, or in most conceptions of the afterlife uh, from traditional uh, Christian uh, values and traditional Jewish values as well, because of course, Edgar Carrot, being an Israeli author, would be a, a Jewish author. Um, suicide is not really something that is you know, necessarily forgivable, but in this conception, it's not actively punished. People are just kind of continue to live their lives. And maybe that is a punishment, maybe not, but most of the people seem relatively okay with where they are. And I think that that's a lot of the theme of this book is just being okay with where you are, even if it's not the best situation you can imagine. Um, I, I also kind of liked that um, at one point they're driving along and they stop at a bar in an Arab neighborhood and the bartender was a suicide bomber. And it's obvious that that's how he died because um, in, in this story, when you die, uh, all of the scars from, from your method of suicide uh, stay, stay with you. So it's obvious that this is how he died. And um, neither he nor really either the, the two Israeli characters, Morty and Uzi, seem to hold a grudge because, you know, it's over. What's the point? You know, what's the point in holding a grudge after everything has, has come to pass? And, uh, and yeah, I think that's a, it was a really interesting idea there. Um, I also liked at one point, um, Uzi asks the bartender, uh, you know, is it true that they promise you 70 virgins after a suicide bombing? And uh, the bartender says, um, says, basically says, yes, and look what I got. And Uzi kind of, you know, pokes at him a little bit, teases him a bit. And he says, and what did they promise you? And I think that's a really interesting point, uh, you know, that, uh, it's so easy to uh, it's so easy to judge the uh, sort of theological theological ideas of other religions, but it's so difficult to take a step back and see how, uh, how our own assumptions about these things can be just as uh, just as misleading or just as silly. Um, and yeah, anyway, uh, I think, um, you know, it's it's not a very long book. Uh, I, it, it's a short story, essentially. It, it, I, I would classify it as a novella, but it is kind of a short story. It's like on the short side of a novella. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's worth having a look, uh, especially if you've seen the movie, which again, I have not, but I plan to for Tom Waits, because I love Tom Waits. Uh, and uh, I think that's going to be it. So um, thank you guys for listening. And uh, just as I did last time, I want to run my random list or list randomizer to pick my next book. And let's see, what do we have? Oh, this is going to be interesting. We have a history of the Sikhs. Um, you know, as you may have noticed from uh, my reading of, uh, of my physical books here, I have a big interest in, in history. In, per in particular, I have a big interest in the history of uh, South Southeast Asia um, and also the Middle East, but just sort of, I, I don't know, there's a belt of cultures that runs from about like Indonesia up through Southeast Asia, through India, through um, Iran and Central Asia and into Eastern Europe. And that kind of belt of, of cultures in between the Western world uh, and you know China, Korea, Japan, that's where my key biggest interest lies. And I think um, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna really enjoy reading a history of the Sikhs. So uh, I'll see you next time and I'll let you know 
what the Sikhs were up to. <laughs> All right. So have a good evening. Bye.